Now this is a Porsche in need of some love. It is a 1984 Porsche 911 Cabriolet. And this represents the state of her 3.2 liter air-cooled engine. When I came across the engine, it had already been removed from the car and partially taken apart. This car has sat in the owner's barn for years, waiting while dust collects, waiting while time passes. And now, over the next few episodes, we're going to be renewing and restoring this car and putting her back on the road for, once again, enjoyment. Specifically, in this episode, I'm going to be going over what kind of costs you might expect when rebuilding a Porsche 911 air-cooled flat six motor. Whether you are building it yourself or if you would like someone like us to help you with that. And although we are looking at a 3.2 liter fuel injected motor, you'll find that a lot of these costs are applicable to most 911 engines. to go see this car to evaluate its need for restoration. The only thing I knew about this motor was that it was a 3.2 and the owner had taken it out of the car and started to disassemble it. In my opinion, one of the worst things someone can do is disassemble something without a definite plan to rebuild. Often projects like these are left for years and they're less valuable because now whoever takes on the project has the burden of figuring out where all the pieces are and how it's all supposed to go back together. So on arriving, I wanted to get a general appreciation for the state of the car. From this photo, the car looks in pretty decent shape. But as you draw near, you see the car has several dents, chipping paint, a door which looks like somebody tried to open it too far, and mud wasps have made this car their home. But the main point was with the motor and assessing its condition. So this is how the engine looked when I came upon it. And as you can see, fortunately, it was not completely disassembled, uh, especially the long block was still intact. And that's a good thing because so often when things are taken apart, it, it's just things are scattered and trying to put them back together um, can take uh, considerably longer if you're not the one who took them apart. And if you're having to look around constantly for where small little parts are. Right. So as we look at the costs of the machine work and the parts went into this motor we need to be mindful that these figures here are representative of what was needed on this particular motor not necessarily you know always needed on these motors so each motor is different and each has seen different life 
experiences and mileage. So the first thing to look at is the uh, machine work that was done to the case. Of course, uh, cleaning the block. Um, and in this case, we went the extra step and did a bead blast of the case, which really made it look really nice. Um, checking the case for line bore, it's pretty essential. And uh, we, re we did remove the studs to go ahead and replace them all. And um, and then we uh, had the uh, piston uh, squirters removed and, uh, and uh, replaced. Okay, next would be machine work done to the heads. Of course, this is very important. Um, so, you know, co complete valve job, um, resurface the heads and, and install new valve guides. Um, new exhaust studs were, were put in. New exhaust valves were put in. So to the crank rods, pistons, and cylinders, uh, we did have the uh, the rods uh, magnaflux checked for any cracks. We reused the pistons and cylinders, so there was some cost saving there. And uh, I guess the most expensive portion here was the camshaft regrind, and and that's of course very important. That's the wear part. Okay, now with the machine work out of the way, now we finally get into things like uh, main and rod bearings, um, new timing chains, oil return tubes, piston rings, and again, we're reusing the pistons. And then here we are into some additional parts. Uh, these are mostly peripheral, oxygen sensor, um, a clutch kit, um, good time to do that if you need it, fuel injectors, we've replaced all the fuel lines. So now looking at the summary of all of this um, and adding in some uh, numbers for our shipping, we're looking at about nine and a half thousand dollars. Not included in these figures so far has been labor. Well, there has been um, machine shop labor hours, but there hasn't been really uh, engine reassembly labor. So I'm, I've got about 60 hours there that I'm estimating, and that would be at whatever your shop rate is. So it's informative to look at, is there something that could have been done to make it less expensive. And so what I have here is a what if analysis and it's basically looking at just the long block. Okay. We're not going to look at the externals because, um, you know, not every engine's going to need all, you know, new fuel lines and so on like this one did. So we're just looking at the long block and, uh, we came up with about $7,600. And so now let's strip away the non-essentials, the, the bead blasting of the case, although it's, it looks really nice, it's, it's not essential. Um, and then uh, replacing the head studs, um, we did have some corrosion on some of them. We probably could have just replaced a few of them. We didn't have to go with, you know, the super tech. And so we add a little bit money back in for, you know, what we would have done differently. So really we're coming up with still about $6,700 on that. So there is some cost savings that could have occurred and still produce a quality build. On the flip side of that, it could have been worse. We could have had to replace our pistons and our cylinders and, and so on. And you, so you see that uh, the cost could have varied wildly in the other direction. So those are the numbers, those are the costs. So, but what does all this work look like? So let's take a look at this build in a little more detail with some photos and video and a test run of the motor on the stand.
Bead Blasted Case. New Piston Squirters. Magnaflux Rods. And new Bushings. All new main bearings, rod bearings, and intermediate shaft bearings. All new head studs. Pistons and cylinders were thoroughly cleaned and checked for tolerances. Complete valve job on the heads, new exhaust studs, and various as needed. New oil return tubes. New chains and guides. With that will bring this video to a close. If you found this information useful, please give us a like and subscribe, it helps a lot. If you'd like to have your air-cooled Porsche motor rebuilt, we're happy to talk to you about that. Coming up we'll be doing some more work on this car, and we'll be showing that in some of the forthcoming videos. And I've got another very different 911 engine build, and I'll be going over the costs involved in that one as well. And until next time, tschüss.